Hey guys, and welcome to another video here in Microsoft Flight Simulator and the Airbus A320neo from Fly-by-Wire, the A32NX. Today we're going to be looking at a new upcoming feature of the electronic flight bag, and that is the ground handling screens, where we control things like the jetway, the baggage, the catering, the fuel truck, and the pushback, which uh, is going to be absolutely great. So let's jump on board and let's take a look. So one of the things that really spoils the immersion when you're set here in the flight deck is having to bring up the air traffic control screen here to uh, contact ground services and, uh, and do those sorts of things. You've all had to do it and uh, you've all seen me do it in the streams just to start to get a little bit of ground power and of course call uh, jetways and things. Well, now, thanks to this upcoming feature, everything can be handled through the fly-by-wires fly pad. So if we go now to the ground page, you'll see even in the uh, versions available at the moment whilst filming this, this page is on your electronic flight bag, but it is not yet active. So we're going to have a look at how this is uh, is going to work and show you what is uh, what is coming up. So first thing we would do, of course, is we probably want to call the jetway over, let some passengers in. So I'll go on, uh, go to the jetway, give that a click. And instantly you can see the jetway is now uh, starting to come and if we come down here and have a look at our uh, lower ecam on the doors page you can see the uh, left side cabin door is now open and as you would expect same will happen for uh, for other things so if we want to get the ground power connected we can uh, select the ground power and just so you're aware, you may have noticed sometimes you get that wonderful air traffic control thing where you ask it to send the baggage or the ground power and air traffic control in the simulator says, we're sorry, we don't know where the baggage is or no ground power unit is available. Well, the same thing can, uh, can happen here from what I've observed. And if that does happen, it's just a case of pressing it a couple of times to spawn the power unit or spawn the, uh, the luggage cart in. And then it will come. But uh, just as you have to do in the air traffic control menu, you do have to press it a couple of times if it's not already there. So what we're going to do today is we're just going to get this all uh, ready. We'll uh, have a look at a couple more features. We're then going to push back. And then what I plan to do is I'm going to just taxi over to uh, a remote stand over here and see how, uh, how that works once we've arrived at an airport, so to speak. So let's just carry on a little bit and uh, get back inside the uh, the flight deck. So of course you can call the fuel truck as well. I don't really ever use the fuel truck in this because that would bring up the uh, the fuel balancing page just here, which as you know from watching the other flights and streams that we do, uh, we no longer need to touch this when importing things from Simbrief, so I'd probably leave the, uh, the fuel truck alone, but it is there if uh, you require it. Just remember of course that if you do call the fuel truck, the fuel truck will take quite a while to arrive. Um, it's usually spawned off in some far distant corner of the airfield, so don't expect that to arrive uh, instantly. We can of course call the baggage, so if we select the baggage, we can then go down here and check there we go, the cargo doors open, and the passengers out there can uh, sit and have a look at uh, at the baggage being uh, loaded in. Of course, as I've just said, if uh, it doesn't happen first time round, then you'll probably have to click it a second time after all the baggage loading carts, etc. and luggage has been uh, has been spawned into your particular parking spot. So we're going to have a look at that in a moment when we push back and, uh, and taxi over there. So once that's all done, what else have we got? We can uh, call catering. And the catering truck, same deal applies. There's the back door opening up and have we got a catering truck? Yes, we do. So they're all going uh, straight forward. So while we'll be doing this, this is a great little feature that I can't wait to use uh, live on stream when we're doing our real ops flights, as uh, this can obviously all be being done and adds quite a lot of immersion and realism to the flights that we're doing. We can, of course, at this point be setting up, going through our uh, operational flight plan, sorting out the, uh, the setup of the McDo and the uh, flight management guidance computer. Um, everything's now aligned, so pretty much we are ready to test that uh, test that pushback feature. So with the APU is already running, I'll get the APU bleed going as well. Uh, I'm going to disconnect the external power, and we can send that on its way back to the airport. So we can 
disconnect that. That should then disappear. There it goes, down the bottom corner. Let's say our uh, passengers are now all on board, so we can probably get rid of uh, those. So give that a second, and the jetway should start to retract. There we go. So now that's uh, all done. I think I pressed the ground power a couple of times there because the ground power unit has come back. Is that now? Uh, yeah, there it is. So let's just press that once. That's me being too impatient. So we've pressed that once. There it is. Off it goes. Our baggage looks like it's uh, pretty much finished. The catering truck is also closing. Check that ECAM doors page. So I'm just going to let this run for a second. Now the pushback tug, we'll start to call that in uh, in a moment. Ground power's disappeared, catering's disappeared. Check that back uh, door is all closed down here. And has the cargo finished? There we go, the cargo's pulling away. So I expect that door to co close as well. There we go. So we're all ready for our uh, very short taxi across the airfield to a remote stand over here. All right, so let's have a look and see if we can uh, get our pushback tug. So the moment the parking brake is uh, is still on, pop the rotating beacon light on, and let's call the pushback truck. So at the moment, I'm just going to tell it to push us back straight. So if we select this, we can see the pushback truck was consequently being run over by the jetway. Let's just watch for this. We should get a nose wheel steering disconnected as well message, so that's nice. Just wait for him to connect up. Of course, if you're using self-loading cargo, then there may be a little issue with the doors. One of the things you'll have known if you do watch the channel regularly is that I use the pushback helper which is a free app from flatsim.to and that's a great app because you can control the doors independently. So automatically then calling the tug has started to push the aircraft back, which I've actually still got the parking brakes on, so let's uh, release them and make his job a little bit easier, shall we? So that's now pushing back. We can't control the speed again like we can in pushback helper, so we're just going to let him uh, push us back at whichever speed the driver decides to push us back at. Let's uh, get those uh, engines started, shall we? So we can just start taxiing across the airfield. Engine mode select to ignition and starting engine one. So we want to be pushed back to the, uh, the left. So let's select left and there he goes. This is also the Mako Simulations Manchester Airport, so great scenery, go and check that out. Engine 1 is now uh, starting up, as you can just hear. So the aircraft will be continued to push back right until we get to a 90 degree angle and that's quite important it will not push you back over 90 degrees once it hits 90 degrees it will go back straight which is absolutely fine because then we'll almost be in line with the, the taxiway that's just coming up here we can perhaps go left a little bit more and if you can see there the actual tiller moved as well then okay so that's good enough let's go straight back at this point and now let's stop little bit of a jolt there with the uh, the fast taxi speed but let's uh, pop that parking brake on once we've told him that we finished he disappears straight off he does not remain connected so engine one stabilized let's start engine two we could actually do a single engine taxi we're only going over here So for the purposes of the video, we do now a little bit of, uh, we do now have power, engine one is uh, is running. So let's just get that taxi light on. And as I say, I'm just going to taxi almost straight ahead to uh, one of the remote stands uh, that we can see over uh, over there. So 
straight in front of us and, uh, and to the right, I think. What I want to do is basically park in a, a proper parking stand for the airport to see that we can get all of our, uh, all of our services back. As you will know, if you don't park in the correct position, none of the services will come to your aircraft. So there we go, engine, uh, engine 2 is now available. So, let's release that parking brake. Let's just start to roll forward. So if you are new to the channel, please do uh, consider subscribing. And uh, turn on that notification bell as well if you uh, wish to be notified of when the live streams start and of course when uh, new tutorials and updates and news videos are released regarding Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and of course the uh, fly-by-wire A320NX aircraft. So let's just pull this in, uh, in here. In fact, let's make sure we go to the centre. I was going to uh, one of the smaller ones. We will just line that up with the centre. Stand number 64. So as you can see, the reason I've chosen this stand is because there is absolutely nothing here. We've got no stairs, no ramp, no uh, baggage, nothing like that. So let's just say we've arrived. Ladies and gentlemen, that was a very short journey. You're now safe to do uh, deboard. Okay, so first thing we're going to do, of course, is uh, that APU is still running. Let's just shut down those engines. So shutting down engine one, shutting down engine two. Let those roll back. Okay, so we're now back to the ground page just here. So we want ground power. We want uh, the stairs, we obviously can't have a jetway here, and we want to call the baggage. So, can we get a ground power unit? So if we select the ground power unit, there was nothing there. Suddenly, there's our ground power unit, so now that can connect up. Here it comes. Same with the baggage, nothing there. We press the baggage once. There we go, the baggage has arrived. Press baggage again, it starts to do its thing. Uh, jetway won't do anything, however, what I am imagining will happen in a moment when I press the stairs is, there we go, a ramp arrives, and here it comes. Exactly the same with our catering, we've got no catering van loitering around the back of the aircraft. Uh, oh, actually we have, that's been spawned in, that wasn't there when we first taxied, so I don't know what uh, brought that there, but uh, the catering is now available. Now, interestingly enough, at the moment, there isn't any sort of pushback tug, and I know you may have uh, seen in uh, some of the live streams that I <laughs> sometimes have a bit of a phantom pushback going on. Well, if I went and selected that now, does a pushback tug actually a appear? It does. So the pushback tug has appeared, and we're actually starting to move back, which is a little bit strange. Uh, but that is, of course, a bug of the uh, the simulator and not fly-by-wire itself. Let's just stop that. So it may be worth, may be worth trying that again at some point when this is all uh, coded in and released on the dev build, and uh, subsequently the stable version. Uh, perhaps pressing the stop button on the pushback would spawn the uh, pushback tug, and then you can start to uh, to control that. But either way, that is a great first look at how this page is uh, coming along, and it's going to be very, very useful. It's really going to add to um, to the realisms of setting up the aircraft for flight without having to call up air traffic control menus as such. We can do away with those completely now when flying on that sim. Because one of the things that I did found is uh, when I want to call things like that, is if I was on a VAT sim frequency on COM1 and then I went to go and change something, well obviously then it knocked you off the frequency for, uh, for VAT sim and you can miss calls and things which you don't want to do. So you can use COM2 as well to contact the ground and get those services, but the same thing happens in your vPilot client in that it changes the radio frequency so you can still miss calls so hopefully when this is now uh, brought into uh, brought into the dev version stable version and of course the uh, custom fly-by-wire build then 
no longer will we need the air traffic control and we can just call all our ground services from this page so big thumbs up once again to the fly by wire team that is absolutely fantastic can't wait for that to be implemented if you have any questions please leave those in the comments below please also consider subscribing to the channel for uh, following our real ops flights and of course more news on microsoft flight simulator and the airbus a320 nx from fly by wire thank you very much for watching and i'll see you all again soon bye bye for now